Good afternoon. I'm Nancy Toff, president of the New York Flute Club. And it is my great pleasure to introduce to you today, Adam Sadbury, the principal flutist of the Memphis Symphony. This is Adam's New York Flute Club debut, which we are delighted about. Uh, I have family that uh, comes from Memphis, so this is a particular pleasure for me, but we uh, are here for musical reasons, and that is to hear a fascinating program of works inspired by nature from a wide variety of different composers. I think we will all be uh, enlightened as well as entertained this afternoon. I also want to remind you that our flute fair is coming up on April 10th and 11th, and our guest artist will be uh, Julien Baudimont from Lyon, France. So uh, please uh, visit our website to get all the details about that. And now let's welcome Adam Sadbury. Thank you. Hi, my name is Adam Sadbury and I'm the acting principal flutist of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. First of all, I'd like to thank Nancy Toff and the New York Flute Club for the opportunity to be here presenting music to you. It's an honor and a privilege to be giving a recital through this historic organization. And secondly, I'd like to thank you for being here. It is a gift to share music during the pandemic. And it is one of the few things that has kept me going along with nature, which I will get into in a moment. Um, but even though this can't be a live in-person concert, it's a unique luxury to, in a sense, still be in the same room. When the pandemic started over a year ago, I no longer had a regular work to keep me busy, and thus I had a bit of an identity crisis. This past year has consisted of an immense amount of solitude, reflection, and soul searching, and nature has been a big part of that. It's hard to get to know yourself when you don't really spend time by yourself, so I've spent a lot of time being outside and away from human structures to figure that out. A year later, I am extremely glad that I started this journey, and I definitely plan to continue it. Nature gives us context and perspectives in our daily lives. We need to preserve it as much as possible because we can't really do much without a planet. The recital program is almost entirely unaccompanied, and I did that intentionally both because of COVID and to emphasize the relationship between the individual and nature. Each piece is highly characteristic. You'll hear dancing goats and butterflies, the night, Native American winter spirits, summer, flowers, and playing children. And to that last point, if there's anything human that's a part of nature, it's a child's joy. Without further ado, let's get this recital started. It will begin with Arthur Honegger's Danza de la Chevre, which literally translates to Dance of the Goat. It depicts a goat dancing on a grassy hill after the winter snows have melted away. I hope you enjoy.
The next piece on the program is Winter Spirits by the late great composer Catherine Hoover. It is inspired by Native American culture and specifically the Hopi tribe, which is based in northeastern Arizona. The music depicts invoking Kachina and totem spirits of the Hopi religion, as was done with their own Native American flutes. And you can feel the sense of these spirits with the flourishes and the spontaneity and the general freedom that the music presents naturally.
next piece on the program is by another late American composer and flutist, Charles Cellini. His piece, And the Strange Unknown Flowers, was commissioned by the National Flute Association through its 1990 Young Artist Composer Competition, and it was inspired by a, tw a quote from Thomas Wolfe, and it came from Of Time and the River, A Legend of Man's Hunger in His Youth. The actual quote itself is, Of wandering forever and the earth again, of seed time bloom and the mellow dropping forest, and of the big flowers, the rich flowers, the strange unknown flowers. The strange unknown flowers has a sort of esoteric energy to it that permeates throughout the entire piece, and it has a grand sense of rubato going in and out of most phrases. It has enormous peaks and low points, and this is a piece that I have grown to really love, and I plan to program it for many recitals in the future, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I do.
Next up is Carl Nielsen's The Children Are Playing. This piece is an excerpt from Modern, which translates to Mother and was written as incidental music for a celebration. Another famous piece that comes from Modern is The Fog Is Lifting. The Children Are Playing is sweet, simple, and carefree, much like children. I found that the best way for me to approach this piece was with the honesty of a child. So if it sounds childish, mission accomplished. The next piece, Night Music, sounds exactly like its title. It's aleatoric, serial, and uses silence with great intention. Because the sheet music has no time signature or bar lines, rhythm is interpreted by reading the notes from left to right exactly as indicated. The closer notes are, the faster they're played. The more space there is between notes, the longer the silence. There's a section about halfway through the piece that sounds a lot like Density 21.5. There's significantly more silence in this piece, but both of them use key clicks and sporadic note entrances to force the listener to let go of expectations. Using this mindset for the entire piece makes it feel more cohesive, and to me, it makes it sound like stargazing.
This next piece is a new favorite. Valerie Coleman's Danza de la Mariposa, or Dance of the Butterflies, plays out like a series of metamorphoses. The butterfly's identity goes through dramatic shifts that only seem united through their commitment to be unique. <laughs> Even though the piece starts and ends with similar material, the character is so different by the end that it barely seems possible that it's the same butterfly. So maybe it's not. The music has elements of the blues, it utilizes extended techniques, it has lots of rhythmic intensity, and it's 100% fun. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do.
The last piece on the program is a recent addition. Since I love it and it fits the nature theme, I decided to include a previously made recording of William Grant Still Summerland. It's the first piece that I really understood inside and out. Every note and phrase resonated with me. It connects to a part of my soul that I hadn't been able to access before playing it, so I'm extremely grateful that I found it. It has rich harmonies, a flowing melody, and then like the other pieces on the program, piano. The pianist is the fantastic Dr. Artina McCain, a friend of mine that is a professor at the University of Memphis, and we had a wonderful time making this. Also, since this is the last piece on the recital, this is the last that you'll be hearing me speak on this video. So, thank you so much for tuning in to the New York Flute Club stream. It's been a pleasure sharing Inspired by Nature with you. Nature has given me a sense of self that I'm carrying into every aspect of my life, and if you think you have more room for nature in your life, I highly encourage you to add more. And now, here's Summerland.